Good day, this is Brad Caleb, PhD. Have you ever noticed that something comes out of your mouth and nobody's hearing it? Well, today for me, it was different. I was speaking into the monitor. I thought I was recording it. I see the picture, everything is moving. And when I listen back to what the video was all about, I come to the conclusion, I forgot to turn on the microphone. Of course, this is quite often funny when you hear it from somebody else. But when it happens to you, is that not what life is all about? Sometimes you set out to do certain things and you do not understand why it is not working out. Just because you forgot something. In my case, it was the simple turning on the microphone. My name is Brad Kader, PhD. And my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. Do you know what that means? That I had to learn out of necessity to keep on digging till I hit the reality of the truth. Who am I? I studied in the Netherlands, traveled all over the world, settled in Canada for 35 years, then back again in the Netherlands. It was not always of my own choosing. When I grew up, my dad picked me up when I was in grade one. It was not fun. The reason that he picked me up was to share with me that my mom had just passed away. I didn't know what that meant. He just told me that she was never going to come home again. She went to the hospital in the morning and never came back. So that meant that my brothers and sisters, five of us, went to an orphanage for seven years. Then my father remarried and so on. My life continued just not in the home that my father tried to create because I was outgrown at home. And now I was on my own, living on the street first of all. And then from the street, I went through different schools, ended up on Wall Street. But in the process, I learned and specialized in financing. I was a public speaker, a motivator, and I was very, very good in financing, putting finance transactions together insurance on top of it, mortgages, and impossible situations usually came on my desk and I figured it out and then put the finance deal together. So when I got married and our little one was born, he passed away in my own eye, seven months old. It was due to a mistake in the hospital. But all of a sudden it showed me that it doesn't matter if you are wealth and you don't have life, money means nothing. And so we sold everything and we started all over. We went from the Netherlands to Canada and my wife and I started. And the start was not always easy. We had a lot of setback. First of all, the business I had bought was a thrifty rental car franchise. The guy that I paid in order to take over the business and personnel and everything, went bankrupt. So I lost my money. Then my wife and I are looking at it and said, what do we do? Well, I knew one thing, I could make good money in commodities. So I ended up working in Amsterdam for a while till we had saved enough money and we went back to Canada. Then we worked with training people as my family grew, we got a boy and a girl, healthy this time, everything went smooth, but I was constantly traveling. I was constantly traveling because Canada is rather big. I was training salespeople. Yes, as I was specialized in training, I trained small businesses, I trained direct marketers, I trained multi-level marketers. People that were all in their own knees, comfortable with what they were doing. And so I traveled from Toronto to Vancouver and all the way up all over the place. Now, just to give you a perspective, what that means, if you hop in a car in, in Toronto, you keep on driving for five days and for five nights, and then you arrive in Vancouver. Just to give you an idea what kind of distance we are talking. For some of you that are watching and not familiar with Canada, Canada is an awesome country but you have a lot of situations to deal with. And one of them was that 
as a motivator running your own business, you can become very successful. I trained people, salespeople in a fitness club. I trained salespeople all over the place. And eventually a lawyer found out about me and said, would you want to work with me? And we became partners in that enterprise. We had to finance a large transaction on the million dollar plus, and it was in New York. So I flew in every week to New York, from London, Ontario, to New York, Wall Street, and a private bank. And I learned an awful lot from this banker, and we became friends. Finally, after six months, the deal was complete and was together, all the paperwork was done, and that weekend, the lawyer, who was also a pastor, and I, we got together. And he asked me, is everything okay now? Because I'm curious, how much money are we going to make on this? Because we work partners. And so I told him, you know, a couple of million dollars on this and so many millions following. Wow, that would be awesome because he would be using it and he showed me what he was going to do with it. He said, but I have one problem. I just got this document, it's from the laboratory, laboratory report that has been fudged by 10%. His advice as a lawyer and a pastor was, well, keep your mouth shut. It's just the right lie. Everyone does it. And I knew going home that I would have a problem. And I told my wife, so honey, we have this situation. It ended up when I flew back into New York, I had to share with my friend what I had found. He said, well, I'm ready to sign the papers. Are you ready? I said, I'm ready, sir, but I want you to realize what I got here on my hands. It might change your mind. So I gave him the laboratory a report and he looks at me, he said, that's different than what you gave me. I said, exactly. I just discovered this. So I want you to be aware. If you make the decision, then you know what you're doing. He said, do you know that with this document, you are turning your own job down? that six months of work is for nothing. He said, I respect that. And I will give you something in return. And he gave me a $5 million junk bond. But at the time of the disasters with Milken and Mr. Trump running around, mouthing off about everything in New York, I couldn't really get this released anywhere in New York. So I flew back to London, Ontario, talked to several millionaires and they said, well, the best way that we can recommend you is to get your junk bonds for the moment, go back to school. And that's what I did. And I became the oldest person at that school. I was 45 years of age and it was tough, it was not easy. But in the process, I added on a few things. I went in for law, accounting and taxation. And then we came out with computer sports specialist. The reason why is because it was a lot of fun. I was sitting in a class where those people were dealing with computer support specialists while I was doing my other work. I said, do you mind if I sit in? And as I added those courses to my total, I was the only one that ended up with completing all the courses. And I was second in class. That time, the principal was really excited and for three months they advertised in the newspapers, local newspapers, that I was the top entrepreneur for that year that finished their paperwork and the Toronto School of Business. That got me into touch with several other people, multimillionaires in their own right. And one of them was a friend of mine, became a friend of mine, and we spent almost 10 years together. And that also caused me to spend time for almost 12, 18 years in court. And I had to study the law, criminal law, and I won on several cases, I lost some. And then I won on appeal. But I tell you one thing, I put it all in a book. I wrote Deception Protocol, Blueprint for the Prodigal Son, did Trump kill JFK? Question mark. No, but he sure killed the American dream for many. It's available on Amazon. Written by Brer Kayla, PhD. And that PhD stands for Post Hole Dicker because I learned to go all the way to the foundation, 
before you make a statement, before you do anything, make sure that your footing is right. Now that is what I'm offering you as we are dealing with this wealth independence. There is a transition taking place. Is there a wealth apocalypse? Yes, my friend. Wealth is changing. And if you are smart, it doesn't matter if you haven't studied the way trillionaires and billionaires and multi-multi-millionaires are studying. But if you're willing to change, if you're willing to listen, and if you're willing to work a couple of hours a week, a couple of hours a month, depending on the speed that you can work with, you can become financially independent if you want. Now, I'm willing to work with you. I'm going to share with you that I am 40 years of age and I got 31 years of experience of being 40. Yes, folks, I was born in 1950. So that makes me, as of the making of this video, 71 years of age. I do have experience and I learned the hard way. And if you want to combine that with what the course is all about, it is put together by several people and one of them in particular who has been very successful, not only making it, but also keeping it. And that is based on principles. So I would urge you, take a look at this. And if you really feel that you are not earning what you deserve, then I believe that you and I should work together so that you become financially wealthy and independent. God bless you and remember, tough time. Never last. Tough people, they do. Bye for now.